Welcome back to the Tying Gig Build Show. Welcome back <laughs> to, to the, the Tying Gig Build Show. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Tying Gig Builds. Today, we are going to make a 3D music visualizer. As you can see, when I do a little clap there, the visualizer goes right with it. We're gonna have to show a couple demos at the end, but right now we're gonna get into the code and how we did this. We actually made this 3D cube in a previous video. You can link that if you wanna see it, but today we're gonna go through how we made it into a music visualizer. This thing is awesome. The cube idea wasn't enough. Tyler said, you know what gig, I think we can do bigger and better with this. That's I right. Said, let's go for it. So here it goes, builds. Too easy with the build. Okay, let's go over the code and exactly what I did to show these visualizations on the cube. Now, it's worth mentioning that in a previous video, I actually made this LED cube. And if you wanna know how to actually just make the cube and run different weird animations that I made in the previous video, I suggest watching that. This video is just gonna go over how I converted that cube to show three-dimensional visualization of music. The only difference in hardware from the previous build that I did in this one is I attached a USB microphone. The reason we're using a USB microphone is because we're using a PWM signal to control the WS2811 LEDs and the auxiliary sound port is also using that signal in some way in the Raspberry Pi, I don't know, it just doesn't work if you use both, so you need a USB microphone in order for this to work. So the only additional hardware I use for this use case is a microphone, a USB microphone. Now once you have the cube made and all the hardware set up and you have the proper microphone, you should be able to start seeing visualizations on screen. I'll start by introducing the repository that I forked, and this is Audio Reactive LED Strip, and it's by Scott Lawson. It's a really cool library. It allows you to visualize music with a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino type object, in this case the ESP8266. And as you can see here, it's a one-dimensional visualization of music. Now what I did is I created a fork of this repository and I basically mapped these one-dimensional visualizations to a three-dimensional object, in this case the cube. Okay, so first thing you want to do is go to the link in my description about my repository. It's an exact fork of Scott Lawson's music visualizer repo. And the reason is because the code is so highly coupled that it was hard to create a module to, to make it modular because a lot of the code that Scott Lawson made assumed a one dimensional strip. In my case, it was three dimensions. So I had to create files and things like that that were highly coupled with the files already in there. And so it's a, it's a fork of the other repository. So if you go to my repository, the readme is the same as the previous one, and basically you'll need to go down to installing the Raspberry Pi. So what you'll have to do is install the Python dependencies first. Um, this seemed to work for me. The only thing I had to change here in this case was at a three to the end of these Pythons. So it was Python 3 Numpy, Python 3 uh, SciPy, and Python 3 uh, Pi Audio. The reason is because I'm running this on Python 3. I haven't tried on, on the regular Python command. Uh, I suggest just using Python 3 for these. After you install the Python dependencies, you'll go down to the audio device configuration and basically just configure your USB microphone to be your default microphone device for the Raspberry Pi. I didn't use these exact commands. I'm gonna leave an instructables later in the description that shows uh, the commands that I used, uh, sorry, the configuration that I used to configure my USB microphone to be the default. But these might work, I haven't tried it. I just used a different route. Um, you could try this or use what I did. Um, but basically you're just configuring the USB microphone to be the default so that you can hear audio on the Raspberry Pi. So after you configure USB microphone to be the default and you install all the dependencies, you should be able to run the visualization and see the 3D cube. So if you go down to my repository and you clone it, uh, you can verify that if you see the config first, that the device is set to Pi here. And not only that, but a few settings are enabled for us for our use case. So we're not using the GUI or displaying the frames per second. That's just to make it faster. Um, we're not using a monitor on the Pi to see, you know, how the visualization works. If you wanted to, you can change these up. Um, but for our case, we're not using that. And we're setting the pixels that we have to eight. Now we have a 512 LED cube. The reason we're setting it to eight is because it's an eight by eight by eight LED cube. And the code I use. Uh, as already assumes it's a 3D object and it knows that this is just the dimension of one side of the cube. 
Aside from that, there's some a few other things that I didn't change. Uh, frames per second, I think I changed to 30 because I got the best result in my opinion from that. But there's a few things you can try out yourself. I also changed the FFT bins to eight. This is basically the number of frequency bins. Um, so we'll have each LED be its own frequency bin. Great, so if you quit out of the config, you will should be able to run the visualization just out of the box through sudo, python3, and then visualization. Awesome. So now you should see a few animation on screen that reacts to sound on the 3D object, which is great. Let's go into the code and see exactly what I did and the other animations I made to show audio visualization. So the first thing you'll notice is that this is an exact copy of Fork, like I said, of Scott Lawson's directory. So everything's exactly the same as his. The only difference is I added this folder, Pi Animations. Pi Animations has a bunch of different animations that relate to 3D objects and 2D as well, with the square and square wave. But it has a bunch of 3D animations that dictate the three-dimensional visualization that we're going to see on the cube itself. Let's start off with the visualization file, which is what Scott Lawson suggests running from the beginning. And if you run this, you'll see that basically if we're the main file, which it will be in this case if we're running the uh, visualization, you'll see that if we're using the config, it does something. We can ignore that because we're not doing that. But if It always runs LED update and then microphone start stream microphone update. So basically it updates the LEDs and then it starts streaming this microphone update function. The microphone update function is within this file and basically you can see it takes an audio sample at a certain point and it has basically data related to the audio that's coming through the microphone. And it does a bunch of manipulation and Fourier transforms and other weird stuff that I'm not familiar with but at the end of the day what it runs is output equals visualization effect of this and then sets the pixels to the output. After it sets the pixels to the output, it updates the LEDs. So if we go to the LED file, which is this contains this LED object with the update function, you'll see that update actually updates based on the device. So in this case, if it's a Pi, it runs this function. And for Pi, it does a bunch of manipulation again, bitwise manipulation to set the proper RGB values that it's going to send to the NeoPixel library. And then after that, it calls this thing Pi Animation Draw Points. This is where the magic happens, and this is where the animation happens. So, what I added is I added a few animations in Pi Animations. I set the Pi Animation, and then in the update function, I call the Pi Animation, I draw the points, and I set a few parameters. Now, let's go to one example. So, let's go to Cube Pulse. Each one of these animations has the same function signature and draw points. It has the strip coming in, the RGB array, the number of the LEDs, P, P pre previous pixels, which I'm currently not using, but might in the future. Um, so I'm going to keep those for now. And then we're using RGB max. Strip is the NeoPixel uh, object that is used to set with the proper um, LED values, RGB values, uh, to set the colors on the strip. The RGB array is an array of eight entries. Each entry represents the frequency bucket and has a value which represents what the LED color should be for that frequency bucket. The number of LEDs is simply the number of LEDs, in this case eight. Um, P and P previous pixels, don't worry about it for now, and RGB max is the theoretical maximum value that a single entry in RGB array could be. So each one of these draw points functions within all of these animations does the same structure. And what it does is it loops through the entire 512 LEDs and it creates a mapping of what that index for that single one dimensional point represents in that three dimensional cube. Now, because I know the cube I made is snaked in the XY plane and also in the YZ plane, this function here, get cube XYZ from one dimensional index, basically maps this index to an XYZ coordinate based on my configuration, which is a snaked X and Y plane as well as a snaked Y and Z plane. If you want to check out exactly what it does, you can click on it and it goes to the details of what I do, but basically that's what it does in summary. Once we have the X, Y, Z coordinate of the actual index that we want from the one dimensional point, we do a few things based on the animation. So this one is called cube pulse. So basically it starts with a cube in the very center of the bigger cube. 
and it expands and contracts based on the volume and, and of each frequency bucket. And basically what I do here is I'm grabbing the index from the cube mapping for this specific animation, which is the cube vector. And then I'm also doing a few calculations here as to whether or not I should draw the actual point, And then I set the data in the strip. Now this is the same format for all of these. So once you're familiar with all these animations, you can kind of look through the helper functions that I made. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory what they do based on the comments. Um, but if you want to get into the nitty gritty of the code, I suggest reading it. We're definitely going to create more animations. Um, these are definitely a good start. But uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg. I can't wait to see where this thing goes. Uh, so let's just cue the demo. <laughs> Guys, as you can see, this cube came out awesome. Um, it's going pretty well with, with the voices and everything. Don't forget to check out Instagram. We're gonna have some Christmas themes coming up with this cube, a little bit of surprises there for you. Um, we really appreciate the support. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And the, the possibilities are honestly endless with this. It's so many, there's so many things you could do. You can do. It. Like, let me bring my bud Tyler in here. The possibilities are endless. Just think to yourself, you're watching two people talk in front of a cube. Bill. <laughs> that's, that's so good though. <laughs>